Usually, five o'clock in the day, I'm not usually doing this kind of talk. Usually, I'm stuck in the middle of meetings, many, many boring meetings. Um, so I'm glad to be here. Uh, and uh, as I found out uh, before this session, you have a real economist session, which talk about something more, I believe, more interesting, theoretical and fundamental. And I'm not so sure what else I can contribute you know, uh, after that session. Um, maybe I would, uh, let me just run through a few things, few things in my mind. And uh, usually in this kind of session, what works better, it will be a, a, the panel discussion and, and, your, and, your, and your, uh, your questions and your thoughts. Uh, I suppose this session is about the opportunity and challenges for Hong Kong as a financial center. And uh, I'll talk about that. And uh, something on my mind these days, of course, is always have to do with the short term, the short term challenges that, that we face. And uh, if I start with that, then I, of course I would so give, us, give you some perspective of what I worry about um, and where I think the, the, you know, the pressure points will be uh, for us at least from, in the government and where we, where we think we can be going uh, from, from, from this point. Now, of course, the, the pressure points is uh, definitely the, um, the QE, the tapering of QE. And uh, that's the kind of thing on everybody's mind. Uh, and you also have the, uh, the last couple of weeks, we also see the, uh, the, the cash crunch you know, in, in China. Which, and then yesterday, the Portuguese uh, bond market. So suddenly, things you know, rear the ugly heads. Uh, and we, we are reminded that there are more challenges that we you know, in, uh, in, in maybe in, in, in this year. Now on the QE, on the QE, uh, my perspective on QE is that uh, it, it's something great for America, but not good for everybody else, okay? It's wonderful for US, uh, you know, they, they, they did a QE uh, without paying any cost. Uh, there, there were some detractors uh, early on saying that with the QE, the US currency would depreciate, uh, there will be inflation. Uh, of course, they're all wrong. <laughs> the reason is there's no inflation because the, the demand is so weak. And then U.S. is the uh, world currency. Uh, they don't get punished. Okay, so, so the QE clearly is very good for the United States. Uh, I'm not so sure it's good for every, anybody else. Now, for the, U, the question, I don't want to get in a debate about QE, exactly what it does, because I, I always feel that it's you know, if I get into that, I would uh, probably invite my academic colleagues up here and, and, and then let's have a uh, good model ex you know, explaining how monetary policies can really help us you know, get a real production going. I happen to think that the QE doesn't do much about the real economy. I happen to think that the kind of, the kind of positive economic growth that you, we are now seeing in the U.S. is really a reflection of the ability for the U.S. to innovate. Uh, of course, they also get lucky with uh, the shale production uh, and so on. So something fundamentally is uh, happening in the U.S. which is good news for the U.S. and also for the world, which is that the economic growth is coming back in the States. Whether or not it's due to QE, I don't know, okay? Uh, but it does mean that there is a def definitive timetable, I believe, that QE will be tapered off. Uh, we can debate about that, but I think that now the, the investors are all weakening up to the fact that there is the QE will be will be tabled out, will be uh, off the table, and, and, then, and then you will, what kind of things you will do to the market. Now, I happen to be, be, believe that QE has actually contributed a lot more to the volatility in our market. I must, I must say unwanted volatility in our market uh, than anything else. I don't believe it has changed the way that we look at Hong Kong market or Asia regional growth. It doesn't really make us more optimistic about Asia or, or Hong Kong. Uh, I think QE basically has gone up, has brought up all the prices in, in the asset market, uh, stock market for a while, and then the housing market uh, in Hong Kong, uh, which has uh, actually contributed to more pain for us than, than benefit, because uh, we're going to deal with the pain of these uh, uh, you know, you know, rising interest rate and how that would affect the asset prices and all, this, all the sentiment in our market. So, so basically, we, we need to manage it, you know, uh, manage all this. Uh, it's not going to be as bad as some people fear. Uh, I, think Hong Kong, I think Hong Kong, in a way, Hong Kong, 
although Hong Kong's uh, uh, property market was very, was very buoyant because of low interest rate, uh, our, our stock market, I believe, was more rational. Uh, even though with all the short-term money coming in, uh, I think we are temp tempered by the, by the uh, real economy uh, or, the, or, the, or the challenges in the real economy in, on the mainland. So Hong Kong equity market didn't really go off the roof. So I think in a way, that may be a blessing. So we don't really have to struggle with the too, many, uh, too many bubbles, uh, you, know, you know, with two hands. So, so that is the, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, the challenges that, that we, we need to deal with on the QE. Uh, the Chinese situation, economic situation is definitely more, perhaps has a more immediate uh, uh, feedback on, our, on the Hong Kong market. I think the Chinese economic challenges uh, will be felt in our stock market. It already contributed to the volatility in the market. Uh, I didn't participate in the earlier session. Uh, I happen to think that it's a very good idea for the Chinese uh, leadership to really uh, rein in the central banking sector. I think reform is very important. Uh, continuing uh, reform and changing the economic growth model is very important. It will be, it will be challenging, challenging to pull it off. But I think it's very important for the for the uh, for Chinese to get a growth model on its on the most sustainable basis and uh, and bring in this uh, shadow banking sector. It does mean, depending on how they ex execute this strategy, it does mean that for Hong Kong there will be there will be challenges. So for for people who are managing money or trying to uh, you know helping company raise money, uh, this could be it may not be an easy time. You know uh, this this couple months uh, in this year. So we are in a, in a um, so I don't want to, to get a too gloomy picture to you. I think, uh, uh, I think that's just a, a, a realistic assessment in my mind about what, what kind of uh, uh, short-term situation that we are in. Uh, we have not, in terms of the financial sector uh, in Hong Kong, uh, clearly we've got to manage the short-term problems. And uh, in a way, I feel that our, short, our financial sector has not really done as well as I wish we did, you know, in the last year, uh, because of uh, the you know the you know the uncertainty caused by QE, as well as the uncertainty caused by the the mainland uh, economic performance. Uh, there were a lot of hopes that Hong Kong could do better this year uh, in in capital fundraising and so on. We didn't do as well as as we thought we, we could because I think because of all, the, all this uncertainty. So we need to get rid of give it, give it, give it all the uncertainty before we can really move on to, uh, uh, to, to for, for much healthier financial market growth. Now, I don't think that Hong Kong, uh, I think Hong Kong will do very well. Uh, I think China will do well, you know, despite the challenges. I have a lot of you know, hope that the leadership in, in China uh, has the experience or has the, um, um, uh, the Chinese state as a whole has a track record dealing with these kind of problems. So I think there is, despite short-term challenges, I think that we, we should look at you know, uh, some, some uh, positive outcome from all that. Now, I want to come back to, um, uh, for, for China, um, economic model, economic change. What kind of, uh, what kind of uh, uh, policy are we expecting from China? Now, of course, there is going to be a lot of, hopefully, change in the growth model you know, from an export-oriented to more consumption-led model. Exactly what it is, you know, I think we're all trying to figure out you know, what will be strategy. How do you get the urbanization going? How do you increase consumption? So that's one, that's one, unknown, un one, one unknown variable about the Chinese economic change that we should be watching for. The other thing that I feel more confident that China will be, will be doing, implementing, will be maybe more opening up in the capital sector. Uh, more opening up in the capital account, for example. Uh, more convertibility in the renminbi. Uh, a more increased push to get the renminbi out of the country and get renminbi to be accepted as an international currency. So I think the whole, sec the whole movement, the direction of pushing renminbi out, as well as opening up the capital account, and now a lot of economists in China are talking about the convertibility. Exactly what it is, 
how far, how fast, I don't, I don't want to venture to give you an, an, an idea. But I think, I, think, I think now when we talk to a lot of Chinese uh, uh, think tanks or, or you, can, you can read it from the newspaper, all the kind of talks in China, things are happening seems to be at a, at a faster pace that we, that we, uh, that we, that we expected you know, even a, few, one, a year or two earlier. So I think for Hong Kong, uh, at least for the financial sector, the continuing liberalization in the capital account and maybe more liberalization in the financial market side on the mainland China is something that we want to watch for. Uh, and that's the kind of bet I'm making. I'm betting, I'm betting that China is opening up more. How is it helping Hong Kong? Uh, we have always been betting on China will continue to open. We have a lot of debates in Hong Kong whether or not it's good for Hong Kong that China close the door or open the door. Okay? Someone argued that if Hong Kong, if China becomes international economy, Hong Kong will lose our place. So it's better for China to close the border and let Hong Kong do everything you know, outside. Uh, I do not believe it's a sustainable model. I, I think that if that is a model, Hong Kong cannot grow. We'll be stuck you know, you know, in, the, uh, in the same mode that we were in, you know, starting in the 90s. It's not a bad financial market, but we, are, we won't be a, a global market. I happen to think that if Hong Kong wants to be one of the top three financial markets in the world, uh, on the same par as London and New York, we got to have China opening up uh, so that Hong Kong can really tap into that market and build our own financial center. So I'm betting that you know, China will open up the, the, the borders in some way uh, and open a capital market for Hong Kong uh, to do more intermediation. And Hong Kong should not underestimate our, uh, our uh, contribution and value. Uh, if you look at every step in a way in Chinese economic uh, reform and opening, Hong Kong is a key part to that process, starting with actually now 20 years ago, the H share you know, coming to Hong Kong market uh, to about 10 years ago uh, when the, all these Chinese state-owned banks were capitalizing uh, in using a Hong Kong uh, capital market Every step in the way, when China is doing a huge, you know, um, uh, uh, sort of like sweeping reform, Hong Kong is there. So I won't be surprised if I bet that I bet on the fact that Hong Kong will continue to play that role when China liberalizing their capital account and then the, uh, you know, internationalizing the, the RMB. So, so that's um, if you look at the RMB market development over the last two years. Uh, how would I assess that? I think we have done quite well. We have done quite well. Uh, in fact, I'm surprised that we did quite well. Uh, if, <laughs> look, at la look at last year. Actually, we are, we are, you know, our deposits are growing. A lot of products are, are coming out. I know my, 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 uh, my, my, uh, my dear panelists will also mention about the products that we are seeing in the remaining market. A lot of markets coming out. The deposits are growing. The, the market becomes deeper and more liquid. So in a way, the market is really growing as it's supposed to be. It's not something that we took for granted because considering the policy window for RMB internationalization is so little, you know, there's it's no guarantee that the RMB market can take off in Hong Kong uh, because there's so much restriction on, on the use of RMB. Uh, in the past two years, the kind of, um, the, what the process is that the market is developing in Hong Kong. Whenever we see a, a, when we see a bottleneck, we go, there, we go out there and, and, and start lobby for more policy opening. So we got a, you know, but it's a really a, um, it's really an experimental process with the Chinese central banks and Chinese regulators and the Hong Kong market trying to figure out how much more to open and how much more to liberalize. So in the, in the past two years, we got lucky. I think we, have, we, we, we worked very hard. We got the market going. But in order for this market to really go, go on, to realize its full potential, I think we're going to need to do more. Okay? And I think that is the, the kind of uh, policy change that we hope to see uh, from China, which allows us uh, to make that happen. Um, I, will see, I see that there is, uh, of course, um, there, there are a couple of avenues that, that we, can, we can think about. Um, the, the, the first thing, of course, is the, uh, you know, the increasing uh, uh, opening in terms of 
how R&B can be used, okay? So how whether fundraising in, 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 a, in a market can be, can be put to use in domestic market. So there's still a lot of uh, potential openings that we can achieve uh, with the, uh, if, if, you know, in r and it also, it may also, it may also come down on, uh, on, on the, on the rumor, you know, opening up in the, uh, in the, uh, in the QDII and QFI market. You know, whether more people can participate in QDII, more people can participate in QFII. So, getting the more the number of people, institutions uh, participate, participate in the market will help us get the RMB flows out to Hong Kong and back to China. So that's the kind of policy that is being, being, uh, being rumored about. And I'm hoping that there's some, some uh, opening in there. So there'll be more, more QDII, QFII involving maybe individuals uh, involving in this process. If you look at that picture, if you have individuals, whatever, you know, in China, who eventually can invest the money into the Hong Kong market, or Hong Kong and in, in, on the foreign investors can invest their money into the mainland market, then where is Hong Kong role? What we're trying to do as a current government is to put Hong Kong in place so that we can provide that intermediation. Uh, the, the argument is that Hong Kong is the best place for the Chinese investors to go to if they want to reach out to the international market uh, because we will have the regulation, we will have the infrastructure to help the Chinese regulators to, to regulate, to fine tune the process, uh, and then to, you know, to, to decide how much they want to, they want to liberalize. And so this is kind of argument we'll put forward. That would mean that if there's any kind of way, any way for the money to, to come out to the, to the world, if we can use it, put it in Hong Kong, you know, then that will help Hong Kong. So the kind of business that we are hoping to build on is wealth management business, is a fund management business in Hong Kong, so that this business will be actually managing the, you know, the, uh, the Chinese investors' money, and, or, and vice versa, because alternatively, we can also help the foreign investors access the Chinese market you know, through our fund management and wealth management services. So this is the direction that we are going with. Um, and if I'm, Come back and make one more point. Uh, Hong Kong is very lucky where we are now because of the, uh, the, the, the need for Chinese companies to raise capital in the last 20 years. But that is not going to get us, you know, to grow much further. So the next big thing we, we must wait for will be for Hong Kong to, to help the Chinese investors to manage their money, as well as helping Chinese companies to manage their foreign investments. So, so the, that will be the next big wave uh, that we hope that will, will, will happen. Uh, and currently, the number of things that we are talking to with the uh, central bank uh, in, on, in the mainland side, as well as the regulator on the mainland side, and trying to you know, discuss a few projects, uh, including, uh, I think your colleagues know about that, the fund management industry, uh, you know, hoping to see some kind of mutual fund recognition. Uh, so that kind of things that we are working on so that will we'll make Hong Kong uh, uh, you know, uh, be a player uh, in, in, this, uh, in, in all this liberalization of Chinese uh, capital market. So I'll stop here. Uh, let's say, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get there uh, in, in a couple of years uh, before RMB becomes a really in, in, uh, convertible currency that Hong Kong can really capture liquidity um, that's going to be coming out of the world, that we can capture liquidity mainly in Hong Kong. Okay, thank you so much.